Welcome to my lecture online. For those who saw the previous video and wondered what in the world is he doing, I didn't quite get that. That seemed kind of complicated. And sure enough, normally the what we call the graphical method is a fairly good method to use on these types of problems and we did find the correct answer. But yes, we can do it in a different way. And here in this video, we're going to do it in a different way by using the first of the three equations of kinematics in a little clever thinking. So let me show you how I can do it using this particular uh, method. And again, the problem was if an object accelerates from one meter per second to seven meters per second, what, what is its average speed over the first half of the distance covered? And here graphically, let me explain. We have an object that starts at one meter per second and accelerates to seven meters per second, but they don't tell us how long a time that it takes. So let's say it takes t amount of seconds. Now they tell us that they want to know the average velocity over the, the distance where, you, where the object goes to half of its total distance covered during the entire acceleration. So using this equation right here, we can use the equation twice. First, we're going to calculate the distance to the halfway point, and then we're going to calculate the total distance traveled. So here, we're going to say distance to the halfway point is equal to the initial distance covered, and let's just call that x sub not being equal to zero, plus the velocity that we start out with, which is one meter per second, times the time that it takes to get to the halfway point. Now the halfway point would be from here to here, that takes t sub 1 half, but just to make it easy, I'll let x equal t sub 1 half, so don't get confused with the x over here, we're just going to call the time that it takes to get to the halfway point equal to x, makes it a little bit easier. So 1 meter per second times the time that it took to get there, plus 1 half times the acceleration, of course we don't know yet the acceleration, how do we find the acceleration? Well, it turns out that acceleration is equal to the slope of this line in a velocity versus time graph. So the slope represents acceleration. So we can say that acceleration is equal to the rise over the run. And here we can take the rise to be 6 divided by the run to be equal to t because we let t equal the total time that it takes to reach the full distance. So we have uh, where we are here, the acceleration will therefore equal 6 divided by t, and then we multiply the times the time that it takes to get to the halfway point. Of course, the halfway point would equal x again, so it would be x quantity squared. So this gives us the distance to the halfway point in terms of the time that it takes to get to the halfway point and the time that it takes to get to the full distance. So if we simplify this a little bit, the distance to get to the one half point is equal to x plus half of six is three, and then we got x squared over t, so that gives us three x squared over t. And so this is the distance to get to the halfway point. Now we're going to take the same equation and calculate the total distance traveled. So in this case, uh, let's see, I may have enough room here to put it right here. So the total distance equal again zero, plus the initial velocity, that would be equal to one meter per second, times the time to get to the full distance, in this case that would equal in the t plus one half times acceleration, which is six over t, times t squared, because that will be the total time to get to the full distance. And then if we simplify that equation, we get d is equal to t plus half times 6 is 3, and one of these t cancels out this t, which is 3t. In other words, the total distance traveled equals 4t. Well, if the total distance traveled equals 4t, then have the distance traveled, d to the one-half point, or, yeah, d to the one-half point, would equal half that, which is 2t. Now, if the distance that it takes to get to the halfway point in terms of x and t is equal to this, and the distance to get to the halfway point is equal to that, we can simply set those two equal to each other. So now what we can do is we can say that x plus 3x squared over t must equal 2t. And then if we write that in terms of a quadratic equation, we move that over to the other side, we can then say that 3 over t x squared plus x minus 2t equal to 0, now notice we have a quadratic equation which we can solve for x. Now remember, what is x again? 
x to the time that it takes to get to the halfway point. And to get the average velocity, we take the distance divided by time. In this case, the distance to get to the halfway point, or half the distance, divided by the time taken to get to the halfway point, which is t to the 1 half. So we take half the distance traveled divided by t to the 1 half, and that gives us the average velocity. So we need to figure out what the time to the halfway point is, which we said was equal to x in this equation. Remember, we let x equal the time to get to the 1 half point. So if we solve this equation using the quadratic formula, we can then say that x is equal to minus b. Uh, b is equal to 1, so minus b is minus 1, plus or minus the square root of b squared, which is 1 squared, minus 4, times a, which is 3 over t, times c, which is minus 2t. And the whole thing divided by 2a, and since a is equal to 3 over two, uh, t, then 2a would be 6 over t. So that's the quadratic formula. It's minus b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2 times a. And so if we simplify this, we get the following. x is equal to minus 1 plus or minus the square root of. So the minus times the minus makes that a plus. The t and the t cancels out. 4 times 3 is 12, times 2 is 24, plus 1 is 25, so it's the square root of 25. Let me make this a little bit shorter. There we go. All divided by 6 divided by t, 6 divided by t, which is equal to, now notice if I take the negative of this, I get the negative 5. And there's no such thing as a negative time, so the negative is not a good solution. We'll take the positive, so 1 plus 5 divided by 6 over t. So this is going to be equal to, oh, wait a minute, that's negative, Ooh, almost made a mistake, negative 1 plus 5 uh, divided by 6 over t. So this is equal to 4 times t over 6, or this is 2 thirds t. So what this is telling us, that the time to get to the halfway point is equal to 2, two thirds the time that it takes to get to the full distance. All right, so now we're ready to take the, to calculate the average velocity. The average is equal to half the distance traveled divided by the time to get to the halfway point. Now, what is half the distance traveled? Well, we have that right here. That's 2t. So this is equal to 2t divided by the time to get to the halfway point, which is 2 thirds t. Well, if we simplify that, the t's cancel out. So this is equal to 2 times the inverse of that, which is 3 over 2, which is equal to 3, and the units, of course, are meters per second, because we're figuring out the average velocity, and notice we got the exact same result. It kind of worked the same way. The only difference here is that we use this equation of kinematics to find the distance to the halfway point and to find the full distance and equate them to each other. In the previous video, we used the area underneath the curve to set the distance of the first half of the trip equal to the distance of the second half of the trip. And we essentially got the same results. So you can see that we can do it either way. We could do it graphically like we did in the previous video, or we could use it, do it using the equation of kinematics. Either way, we got the right result, and that is how it's done. <laughs> At least I took a nap before this. You didn't. <laughs> All right. Payback.